Starting off number 10 now, we have the alligator snapping turtle. Look at these things. They look like the result of asking a 10 year old to draw what things 100 million years ago looked like. Now surprisingly, they wouldn't be far off with that. You see these creatures are mainly found in the southeast of the United States. They belong to a family with a long fossil history going right back to the late Cretaceous era from 66 to 72 million years ago. Ever since then, these 400 pound turtles have been just doing their thing. And their thing is mainly just being the heaviest freshwater turtle in the world. They have a large heavy head and a long thick shell with three dorsal ridges of large scales. It's no wonder that some people have confused them for actual living dinosaurs. Because of their name, most people stay well clear of these creatures, you don't want a snapping turtle to snap your finger off. However, scientists have found that snapping turtles bite about as hard as humans do, and not nearly as hard as other turtles. If you've ever been bitten by another person, you'll know it can be painful, but hey, at least you still have your finger at the end of it, I hope. Next up at number 9 now, we have the goblin shark. These are a rare species of deep sea shark, and if I'm honest, they're pretty ugly, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Their scientific name is actually Mitsukurina Otsutoni, that's a Japanese name named after the Tengu, a mythical creature often depicted with a long nose and very red face, a bit like a goblin. This species is an astonishing 125 million years old. Around that time, human ancestors looked a bit like small rodents, so yeah. These things are very old. They're so old that scientists sometimes call them a living fossil. They're really interesting creatures. They have a flat snout lined with openings that serve as electrical sensors that track down their food. You see, the fish they eat give off electrical impulses whenever they move that the goblin shark picks up on. They're big but sneaky, easily able to catch their prey off its guard. Whatever they're doing, it's working, and they've been around for a very long time. Moving on to number eight now, we have the giant stingray. This may look fake, I promise you it's not. Most of the time when you hear the word giant before an animal's name, it probably died out a long time ago. The giant scorpion, giant centipede, that sort of thing. The giant stingray didn't get the memo. It's still alive and kicking and stinging. These things can be over six feet across, 16 feet long, and weigh up to 1,300 pounds. If that isn't scary enough, they also have a 15 inch serrated poison spike protruding from their tail. The good news, if there is any, is that the giant stingray is generally not aggressive towards humans. If you do annoy one though, it's serious. Their sting is sheathed in toxic mucus and is capable of piercing bone. They're normally found in Indochina, Borneo, and across Southeast Asia. Their desire for seclusion is probably the main reason that modern science didn't even record them until 1852, and perhaps the reason they've stayed alive for so long. Next up at number six now, we have the Triops. There's no mistaking these, they definitely look prehistoric. Looking at a Triops really is like looking at a fossil come to life. They're crustaceans, that have a fossil record reaching back 200 million years ago. Honestly, I'm gonna say it now, that puts anything on this list to shame in terms of age. 200 million years old. The dinosaurs only went extinct about 65 million years ago, which is practically last Thursday compared to just how long the Triops has been around. For such a long-lived species though, the individual members don't really survive that long at all, just 90 days once they reach their adult stage. An interesting thing to note about the Triops is that their eggs are probably a lot tougher than them. An adult triops can survive temperatures of about 34 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or 40 degrees for two hours. Not bad. Their eggs, however, are something else. The eggs enter a state of extended diapause when dry, meaning they can tolerate temperatures of up to 98 degrees Celsius for up to 16 hours. That's just below boiling point. Unlike some of the others on our list, the triops are not endangered and can actually be bought as pets for aquariums at home. One of the product's names for them is Aquasaurus, a fitting name for such an ancient looking creature. Moving on to number five now, we have the alligator gar. That sounds like I just mispronounced the end of it there, but no, it really is the alligator gar. Despite the alligator part of its name, this is actually a fish. It lives in fresh water in North America and has done for a very long time. Fossil records show this fish is over 100 million years old. This has earned it the nickname of a living fossil. The big things too, reaching up to 10 feet in length and weighing up to 300 pounds. It can live up to 50 years old as well. And let's get back to the alligator part of that name, shall we? As you can see from the pictures, they earned their name from having a broad snout and dual rows of sharp teeth. Unlike alligators though, they pose no threat to humans. They're slow moving animals and feed mainly on small fish, small mammals, and insects. For me though, it's their scales that are most interesting. They're dark olive ganoid scales. That means they're bone-like and in the shape of a diamond. They're also big enough to be used as arrowheads and hard enough that they will cause sparks when struck with an axe. 
You will have to take my word on that though. Please don't go and attack these fish with an axe. Moving on to number four now, we have the lamprey. These are some of the creepiest looking things I have ever seen. They're the stuff of nightmares. They belong to a family of jawless fish. Instead of a jaw, they have this toothed funnel-like sucking mouth. They range in size from five to 40 inches in length. Imagine a three and a half foot long one of these crawling up your leg in a river. Luckily, they don't really go for humans. They go for other fish. Their preferred method of attack is to just eat their way into the side of the fish and just keep going until they've eaten them from the inside out. Lovely stuff. They're called fish, but really they're sometimes not even considered vertebrates. You could say they don't have a backbone. No offense, lampreys. Next up at number two now, we have the frilled shark. We've got another shark on the list now, and just like the last one we talked about, it's been around for a very long time, about 95 million years. This thing is just strange looking. It looks out of this world, at least the modern world we live in today. The frilled shark lurks in the deep. It's been caught as deep as 5,150 feet down. That might be good news for most swimmers because these things look vicious. Frilled sharks have upwards of 300 pronged teeth, which act as sharp hooks to trap struggling prey. They have an insane ability to open their mouths extremely wide and can swallow things up to one and a half times their length. If these things sound a bit creepy, then you could try avoiding them, but it would be difficult. If I'm honest, they are everywhere. They've been found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, off the coast of Norway, Scotland, Ireland, France, Morocco, Australia, and Japan. They may not come to the surface very often, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Coming at number two now, we have the giant salamander. The giant Chinese salamander has been plodding around on Earth in basically the same form for about 30 million years. It's the largest salamander and largest amphibian in the world, reaching up to 5.9 feet in length. As you might expect from the name, it's mainly found in the rocky mountain streams and lakes of China. Now, despite surviving for this long, it's now classed as critically endangered in the wild due to habitat loss, pollution, and overconsumption. Its numbers are thought to have dropped more than 80% since the 1950s. When it comes to how creepy this creature is, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that they pose no real threat to humans. Giant Chinese salamanders are nearly blind and feed mainly on smaller salamanders, worms, and crayfish. The bad news is they make pretty creepy noises. They've been known to make barking, whining, hissing, and crying sounds. Some of these noises sound so much like the crying of a young human child that they are now known in the Chinese language as the infant fish. Yeah, no thanks. Sounds like a horror movie. And finally, number one now, we have the Tuatara. These reptiles can only be found in one place in the whole world, New Zealand. They owe their name to the Maori language. Tuatara translates to peaks on the back. 200 million years ago, they used to be one of many similar species that lived all over. Now, they're the only ones left. For this reason, they have fascinated science as they provide a unique window into how reptiles would have looked hundreds of millions of years ago. They come in greenish, brown, and gray colors. That makes it sound like there's some sort of toys you can buy. Anyway, they measure up to 31 inches from head to tail tip and can weigh up to three pounds. They have two rows of teeth on the upper jaw, overlapping one row on the lower jaw, and they're the only species in the world that have teeth like that. For many years, there were thought to be none of them left in the wild of New Zealand due to habitat loss. In 2008, though, a tuatara nest was uncovered with a hatchling inside. It's thought to be the first case of a successful breeding in the wild for over 200 years. That's good news. Nice. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Meraxis gigas. Just a couple of months ago in the northern Patagonia area of Argentina, researchers uncovered a new dinosaur species that is being called Meraxis gigas. This gigantic carnivorous creature is said to have been similar to a T-Rex in that it had quite a large head and tiny little arms. The remains of this creature were actually discovered over a period of a few years and in the end the name scientists chose was after one of the dragons in the Song of Ice and Fire book that inspired Game of Thrones. Thrones. Clearly, the dinosaur was discovered before the scientists saw the finale. The remains of this dinosaur indicate that these guys lived to be about 45 years of age and that they weighed about 4 metric tons and lived somewhere from 90 million to 100 million years ago. In our number 9 spot today, we have Jacopil Kanakura. Recently in South America, scientists have found fossils of small, prickly dinosaurs that might just represent an entire lineage of dinosaurs that were previously undiscovered and unknown to science. This species is an armored dinosaur that lived during the Cretaceous era, which was the last era of the dinosaurs, about 97 to 94 million years ago. These dinosaurs were relatively small, weighing only about
about as much as a house cat. Imagine instead of having a cat, having a little spiky dinosaur running around instead. These guys had a row of spikes running from their neck to their tail and they grew to be an estimated 5 feet or 1.5 meters long and rather than a small but mighty carnivore, these guys much preferred to chow down on the plant life in the area they lived. In our number 8 spot today we have Embiosaurus rathi. This discovery came over the course of two archaeological digs, one in 2017 and one in 2019, after which the researchers responsible were able to uncover a mostly intact skeleton which is astonishing. The skeleton is said to have belonged to a new long necked dinosaur. Other than the fact that the skeleton was intact, what made this discovery so remarkable is that it is the oldest dinosaur skeleton ever found in Africa as it was found in northern Zimbabwe. This dinosaur is believed to have grown to be about 6 feet long with its tail and it weighed somewhere from 20 to 65 pounds. It is thought that the remains that these scientists uncovered might be as old as 230 million years. In our number 7 spot today we have the White Rock Spinosaurid. Recently on the Isle of Wight, researchers found bones including a huge pelvic bone and tail vertebrae that may belong to a newly discovered species of dinosaur, perhaps one of the largest predators ever to roam Europe. One of the leaders of the study said, quote, judging from some of the dimensions, it appears to represent one of the largest predatory dinosaurs ever found in Europe, maybe even the biggest yet known. He further added, quote, it's a shame it's only from a small amount of material, but these are enough to show it was an immense creature. As of now, these remains have been nicknamed the White Rock Spinosaurid, named after the geological layer of earth that it was found in. Spinosaurids, which these remains are thought to belong to, are two-legged creatures with crocodile sort of faces. These remains would have been from a carnivorous creature that grew to be more than 32 feet in length and that lived about 125 million years ago. In our number 6 spot today, we have a feathery dinosaur. Later in 2020, a team of paleontologists announced that they had found quite an unusual new dinosaur from Brazil. This feathery dinosaur is said to have been the first of its kind to be found and right now it is thought to have been a carnivorous creature about the size of a chicken. There is evidence however that different from a chicken these guys may have had a stunning these guys may have had stunning colorful feathers and mating displays that would rival today's peacocks and other birds of paradise. They are also thought to have potentially had two stiff ribbon like feathers sticking out from each of their shoulders. Right now there's a little drama surrounding this discovery though because although this fossil and the creature would have lived in Brazil, our modern discovery came in Germany which poses the question. How did it get there? Apparently there are some conflicting accounts of how this fossil was transported to Brazil and this exportation may have been illegal. So there was even a social media campaign to have the fossil brought back to Brazil but the State Museum of Natural History Karlsruhe refused. So everyone's pretty mad about that. There's some dinosaur tea for you in case anyone asks what's the latest in dinosaur drama. In our number 5 spot today we have the Yushisaurus Kopchikai. Earlier this year it was announced that a stocky armored dinosaur with quote distinctive plating was found in southwestern China. This discovery was incredibly important because scientists believed that this might mark the earliest well preserved armored dinosaur ever found in China. Armored dinosaurs are exceptionally interesting and while there are many fossils of these kinds of creatures from the late Jurassic period up until the end of dinosaurs, there really aren't a lot from the earlier periods which is why scientists are particularly interested in these fossils. The remains of this dinosaur show experts that it was medium sized, covered in sharp spines and was quite sturdy and stocky, especially in comparison to the other species it would have lived beside. In our number 4 spot today we have the winged reptile. Back in 2017 in Scotland, sticking out from some limestone in the water was the fossil of a prehistoric creature that was just waiting to be discovered. Upon further research it was realized that these were the remains of one of the largest flying reptiles ever found that dates back 170 million years ago. The estimated wingspan of this creature was somewhere from 2.5 to 3 meters, although the remains that were found were that of a juvenile who would have still been actively growing. The creature was named after the Gaelic words for winged reptile and this discovery was fascinating because it changed what we knew about the timeline and history of winged reptiles. It was previously thought that these kinds of creatures didn't reach the massive size of this one until roughly 25 5 million years later, but this discovery of course showed us that that simply was not true. This guy is now believed to have been one of the first big flying creatures that roamed the planet. In our number 3 spot today we have the dragon of death. 
This massive prehistoric creature has been dubbed the Dragon of Death as it once hunted prey from the sky around 86 million years ago. With its wings fully extended, this creature is said to have measured a massive 9 meters or 30 feet from one wingtip to the other. If that wasn't enough, it is also said that this species is as tall as a giraffe, so in just size alone, this creature is terrifying. While scientists believe that this creature spent most of its time on the ground, they also believe that it may have been one of the first predators to use its wings to hunt prey as it lived and flew in a time before the evolution of birds. In our number two spot today, we have the apex predator. So if you're like me and have a pretty basic understanding of dinosaurs, when someone asks what one of the most terrifying dinosaurs was, I'd say a T-Rex. And while this is partially true, it is also true that for tens of millions of years, T-Rexes were tiny and it was other gigantic creatures who were really winning when it came to the whole apex predator thing. At some point though, there was a switch where T-Rexes gained the coveted title they have today, and researchers still aren't quite sure exactly how this happened or when it happened. But they did recently discover a new species that just might help piece some things together. This new dinosaur was identified by a bone found in a 90 million year old rock in Uzbekistan, and it is a creature that is thought to have been about 30 feet long. The dinosaur, which I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of, maybe we can have it somewhere up on the screen and you'll see why, like Ulagubegasaur Uzbekistanasensis like that's my best guess, was larger than T-Rexes in the same habitat, but at some point they began to give up their habitats to T-Rexes, and right now scientists are hoping that this new discovery might just give them a little insight as to why. In our number one spot today, we have Australotitan cooperensis. Researchers in Australia have confirmed that they recently have found the remains of the largest dinosaur ever to live in Australia. This creature was massive, being said to measure about 80 to 100 feet long and 16 to 21 feet tall at its hip, while weighing somewhere between 25 to 81 tons. These impressive measurements land this creature a spot in the list of top 15 largest dinosaurs ever discovered. These fossilized bones were first excavated from the ground back in 2006 and 2007, but it wasn't until more recent years that these findings were announced, as it takes years of analysis to confirm these kinds of things. These creatures would have lived about 92 to 96 million years ago, at a time when Queensland was still connected to Antarctica, which has made researchers hypothesize that there might be more of these gigantic fossils beneath the Earth in Antarctica as well. Starting off this countdown, we have Coelacanth. What's confusing about these fish isn't their name. It's the fact that everyone thought that they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then, millions of years later, they were rediscovered. These dudes have the most famous comeback story of all time. So, in the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought that they went extinct over 66 million years ago. So, it shocked scientists in 1938 when they were rediscovered off of the coast of South Africa. But they did have have some new features thanks to evolution. Now the fish has four fins that move more like limbs than fins. Theory goes that maybe they were going to become a land dwelling amphibian and then they kind of just changed their mind. I know that's not how evolution works, but it's the easiest way to describe it. So yeah, here's a creature that used to rule the world alongside dinosaurs. In our ninth spot today, we have Nautilus. This is an ancient mollusk that has been around for 500 million years. In fact, they have been around before Pangaea was even fully formed. Now, originally there were 10,000 different species, but now only a few are left and are at risk of extinction. That's because of us. We are over harvesting them, and on top of that, they are slow at reproducing. They need to be left alone right now because they run the risk of extinction. It's kind of sad once you think about it. Like they survived for hundreds of millions of years and only now start to die thanks to humans. Coming in at number 8, we have the horseshoe crab. Now what's trippy is that despite their name, they are not crabs. In fact, they are more closely related to spiders or scorpions, isn't that weird? Now these bad boys are considered one of evolution's ultimate survivors. That's because they date back to 450 million years, meaning they survived 5 mass extinctions. Now these guys can grow anywhere from 18 to 19 inches, from head to tail. Males grow a little less in size, only being 14 
to 15 inches. Still, that's pretty big. The horseshoe crab consists of three parts. They got a front shell, a back shell, and a tail. Now, you may be looking at this tail and you're like, whoa, what the hell? No, 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 that thing can sting me and then kill me. False, horseshoe crabs, although creepy looking, are harmless, but they do have eyes everywhere. They have 10 in total and that freaks me out. In our seventh spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now, if you've seen my other video on sea creatures, then you know how much I hate this guy. It literally gives me the creeps, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, the goblin shark has actually been declared a living fossil, and that's due to the fact that it was thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891, when a goblin shark was spotted off the coast of Japan. Researchers realized that the shark was indeed still alive. And in fact, it barely changed over time, hence why it's considered a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now, these things have the creepiest looking appearance hence why I'm not the biggest fan of them. Plus they have this weird ligament thing in their jaw that makes it so that they can extend their mouth out and snatch up their prey. Plus their mouths launch out really fast. That's also why its mouth area just looks so creepy. In our sixth spot today we have the lamprey. Has anyone here watched a series of unfortunate events? You know, the movie with Jim Carrey, not the TV show. Well, you know that scene where they're on the lake and the giant leeches start attacking their boat? Well, lamprey look exactly like those giant leeches. These things look like they're a mix between a snake, an eel, and a leech. They can be anywhere from five to 40 inches in length, and they attack fish by sucking the life out of them. They're literally like a vampire. Now, wait until you see their mouth. They have 11 or 12 rows of teeth that wrap around in their mouth like a ring. And once they latch onto their victim, they use a barbed tongue to pierce the fish and then just drain the blood out of them. They also excrete a blood thinner to prevent blood clotting. What's crazy is that these creatures have survived four major extinctions in their 360 million year existence. That is wild. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the frilled shark. Now this is another pretty creepy looking shark. In fact, it doesn't even look like a shark. It looks like an eel mixed with a snake mixed with a shark. But fun fact, these sharks are actually the cousins of the great white shark and the hammerhead shark. Now these bad boys have been around for 80 million years. Pretty insane, right? They live in the dark abyss of the deep sea and have rarely changed over the years. Now they were given the name of the frilled shark because because of the frilly appearance of their gills. They also are kind of similar to snakes because they have hinged jaws that allow them to eat big creatures whole. But you don't need to worry, okay? They live deep in the ocean and they don't really show themselves to humans. In our fourth spot today, we have the Wabagong shark. Again, another shark that doesn't really look like a shark. And that's because this shark has camouflage techniques and it likes to blend in with algae covered rocks or the ocean floor. And they do a good job with it too, with their flattened bodies and speckled patterns on their bodies. Now these dudes have been around since 11 million years ago. But don't worry, these sharks don't attack. They'll leave you alone if you leave them alone. The only time they have attacked is when a diver got too close or someone accidentally stepped on one. But no fatalities have ever been reported. In our third spot, we have the Greenland shark. This shark is said to be one of the longest lived vertebrate animals. The shark is also said to be one of the world's largest carnivores and one of the most successful predators in the Arctic waters. These massive sharks are about the same size as a great white shark and eat crustaceans along with things that have fallen off of the ice shelf above. Also, apparently these creepy worm-like parasites like to attach themselves to these sharks' eyes and literally eat their eyes out, okay? I think that's scarier than the shark itself. But yeah, the Greenland shark is still alive today. They live for at least 250 years. One of them lived for 400 years. Some may live to be 500. Isn't that crazy? For reference, a great white shark lives for only 70 years. So they got nothing on the Greenland sharks. Coming in at number two, we have a pygmy right whale. Now, these whales have been around for about 23 million years. In fact, they are considered one of the rarest species of whales. Around two million years ago, they were thought to have gone extinct. 
That was until 2012 when they were rediscovered. Besides that mystery, there's another one, which is scientists don't know where exactly this whale evolved from. There's been much debate over this for a while. What we do know though is that these whales like cool waters, which is what puts them at risk because of climate change. Scientists are worried the rising ocean temperatures will wipe them out for good. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Here's another name that does not match the creature because this animal is not a whale at all. It's not even a whale shark hybrid. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is the largest shark and largest living non mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 26 million years. However, now they are endangered. Now, when you think of sharks, you think that they love to eat fish, and if they get a whiff of blood, they'll just go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't like that at all. In fact, they are filter feeders, meaning they eat plankton, fish eggs, decaying plants, etc. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, an aquarium in Atlanta lets you swim with them. In case that was on your bucket list, there you go. Starting off this countdown, we had the sea jellies. Sea jellies or jellyfish have been around since over 500 million years ago. A reason being is that they are highly adaptable when it comes to change, whereas other animals might die off easily when put in more intense situations. Not only that, but jellyfish thrive in areas of water with depleted oxygen, otherwise known as dead zones, and they thrive in warmer temperatures. Their predators, on the other hand, like sea turtles, fish, and sharks struggle in these environments. So they're just out there thriving and reproducing. In our ninth spot today, we have the vampire squid. Vampire squids are considered a living relic. They are said to have evolved from an ancestor of the octopus. In fact, their lineage goes all the way back 165 million years ago. And that's probably why this creature resembles both a squid and octopus, but are neither. It's confusing. This thing has eight arms and two tentacles. Its arms are lined with spines that are arranged in two rows. What's also unique about this creature is its color, which can change depending on where they are in the ocean. They also have the largest eyes in the entire animal kingdom, which is wild because they are massive in comparison to the size of their body. But don't be fooled by its name, okay? It doesn't go around sucking blood out of other sea creatures like vampires. In fact, it gets its name from its dark color and the skin that connects the arms kind of resemble a cape. In our eighth spot, we have the tadpole shrimp. These tiny little guys have been around for more than 200 million years, despite the fact that they are short lived. They typically only live for about two to four weeks, but they thrive for so long because of the fact that their eggs only hatch when the environmental conditions are favorable. In fact, the eggs are resistant to their environment and have been known to remain dormant for two decades. It's pretty wild, right? Now these guys are called the tadpole shrimp because of their distinctive body shape. They are shaped like an oval with a long forked tail. The tail can extend up to four inches in length. Not only that, but some of these guys may have up to 70 pairs of limbs, and that's a lot. Coming in at number seven, we have the sturgeon. Sturgeon are ancient fish that used to swim around when dinosaurs roamed the earth. In fact, they are about 200 million years old. Fun fact is that these bad boys have a long lifespan. In fact, some of them live to be about 100 years old. Now, what's weird is that the sturgeon, unlike every other fish, don't have scales. Instead, their skin is rubbery and only have a few rows of bony scoots. Another fun fact is that they can grow up to be over seven feet long and can weigh 300 pounds. Now, that is one big fish. Imagine swimming around in a lake and seeing this guy swim right by you. No thank you. New fear unlocked. Sadly, their population is dwindling, but there are a number of cities out there determined to protect their habitat. In our sixth spot, we have the horseshoe shrimp. Now, this is considered a living fossil, and that's because it has hardly changed over the years. I mean, they've been around for 200 million years, and they still basically look the same. Now, they get their name because their body curves a bit like a horseshoe, but they're tiny. They're about 1.5 inches in length. Some species can grow bigger, others grow smaller. Now, these guys have no eyes, which baffles scientists because they would think that after all these years, they would evolve to have eyes. But no, nope, not at all. What else is interesting is that they are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female reproductive organs. You learn something new every day. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with SpongeBob SquarePants. And by SpongeBob, I mean 
a sponge. Now what's interesting is that no one knows for sure how old the sponge is, but a rough estimate would be that they are at least 760 million years old, which then makes them the longest existing marine life species still around. Another fun fact is that a single sponge can live to be around 200 years old, meaning SpongeBob will surpass all his friends in age. That's a little sad, like he'll be alone while he watches all his friends die around him. Anyways, sponges also often use chemicals to deter predators from eating them. Scientists have discovered that some of these chemicals may have potential to treat cancer and HIV, which is incredible. In our fourth spot today, we have the hagfish. Now, I personally hate these things, okay? They creep me the hell out. They literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and then eat them from the inside out. Okay, how is that not creepy? Not only that, but it secretes this slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of the attackers. Okay, they're so creepy and they've been around for 300 million years. In our third spot today, we have the walruses. Aren't these guys so silly and goofy looking? From fossil records, it's believed that walruses date back anywhere from 600,000 years to 14 million years ago. But the ones dating back millions of years ago were not quite like the modern walruses. They don't have the elongated upper canines, but you know, evolution is a thing. However, walruses are currently at risk. Due to climate change, they are losing stable sea ice to chill on, making it harder for them to hunt for food and such, and it's really sad. In our second spot, we have mud skippers. Now, these are pretty interesting creatures that have been around for over 350 million years, according to fossil records. They have the body of a tadpole, but a face of a frog or something. I don't know. So these things can reach around 2.75 to 9.7 inches inches in length. They are usually an olive brown color, however, some species are covered with blue markings. They also have protruding eyes, two pectoral fins, and two dorsal fins. The freakiest thing about them is that they can move their eyes around independently from each other, as in one eye can be looking up while the other is looking down. It's kind of cool, but it's also kind of weird. Like imagine if humans could do that, that would be wild. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Although these guys look intimidating, they aren't. In fact, they are often referred to as gentle giants. They are huge, but not really aggressive. They can grow to be up to 12 meters long. In fact, they are declared the world's largest fish. A reason why they get the reputation of being gentle giants is because they are filter feeders. They can neither bite nor chew, but they can process more than 6,000 liters of water an hour through their gills. Now, its mouth can stretch to four feet wide, but their teeth are so tiny that they can only eat small shrimp, fish, and plankton by using their gill rakers as a suction filter. Not only that, but less than 10% of whale sharks born survive adulthood, which is sad. But those that do can live to be 150 years of age, which is surprising since they have been around anywhere from 245 to 65 million years ago. Starting us off at number 10, we're going to be looking at the Arthropleura. They are a few living animals that scare people more than bugs, insects, or spiders. The Arthropleura can probably be an exception to this rule because, well look at this thing. It's literally a horror movie turned into real life because this creepy crawler actually lived on Earth. I know if this was me, if I saw a centipede, I would be running super fast. I would probably be running faster than Usain Bolt. I don't know if I'd be able to handle seeing an Arthropleura in real life. They are the largest known land invertebrates, and this is of all time, and it is highly unlikely that they had any predators. I mean, would you want to mess with that? No, I didn't think so. They can grow up to lengths of 8.5 feet, and even though they were herbivores, that doesn't make them any less scary. Just looking at all their legs gives me the creep, so let's move on. It's time to take flight in at number nine. We have the Quetzalcoatlus. This prehistoric beast dominated the skies of North America during the late Cretaceous period. This creature was a type of pterosaur. Not to be confused with a dinosaur, it's a pterosaur. A lot of people believe that the pterodactyl was the most dangerous thing lurking in the skies, but they are sadly mistaken. 
That honor goes to the Quetzalcoatlus, whose wingspan was around 35 feet and weighed between 450 to 550 pounds, which makes them the largest creature to ever fly. Imagine if these animals were still alive today. They have the ability to pick up a fully grown male, so this would be terrifying. I would never want to leave my house ever again. When this creature is on the ground, it is equivalent to the size of a giraffe. I mean, is this real life right now? Scientists believe that they can reach altitudes of 10,000 feet and glide at speeds of 100 miles per hour. The Smilodon bites its way to number 8. The Smilodon is an extinct saber toothed cat who lived between 2.5 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. Just by looking at these images of this prehistoric animal, you can tell that they're pretty vicious. They're about 5 feet long and 3 feet high and weigh in at 440 pounds. But that's not the scary thing about these animals. I mean, just take a look at their teeth. That's enough to give you nightmares for a week. And for me, probably nightmares for the rest of of my life. Their canine teeth would grow up to a foot long and they had no problems taking down their prey. They would jump down on their prey from the tree branches, sink their teeth into their neck and then leave its prey to bleed to death. Once they are dead, the Smilodon would return to eat its carcass. Another interesting thing about these creatures is that they are often referred to as a saber toothed tiger. But they weren't even tigers, they are actually distantly related to lions and cheetahs. Next up number 7 we have the Gorgonops, whose teeth were too big for its own mouth. I know what you are thinking, this is a pretty scary looking beast. So why wasn't he in uh, the Jurassic Park? Well he isn't a dinosaur. It is a Therapsid who lived 260 million years ago which is way before the dinosaurs came onto this earth. So their name literally translates to dreadful and I mean looking at this picture I would say this name is pretty damn accurate. These scary looking creatures were about 10 feet long and weighed in at 1000 pounds. There isn't a lot of information about these animals but scientists believe that they were a prime predator of their time because they were huge and had very sharp razor like teeth that could easily slice through their prey. And and even though they weren't as big as a dinosaur, they definitely would have scared other animals that lived during their time. Terrifying us in at number 6 we have the Basilosaurus. Their fossils were first discovered in Louisiana USA in the 1830s and when the paleontologists were studying their fossils they initially believed that these creatures were giant reptilian sea monsters. But they later discovered that they were wrong. The Basilosaurus can be translated into king lizard but evidence shows that they weren't reptiles at all. Actually they are prehistoric whales. This existed around 34 million years ago and scientists believe that these creatures slithered into the water like a giant eel except they were about 60 feet long with powerful back legs and the jaw that can easily snap its victims. And oh yeah to make things even more interesting they have a bite force of 3600 pounds. Thankfully they are extinct because they would probably be hunting humans but back in the day they loved to hunt fish and sharks in shallow waters. Slithering into number 5 spot we are talking about the Titanoboa. For those of you who are terrified of snakes. <laughs> Yeah, it's time to get uh, pretty terrified with this one. The Titanoboa is the largest snake that ever existed. They reach lengths of 50 feet and weigh 2,000 pounds. So uh, to put that into perspective for you guys, they are twice as long and four times as heavy as the modern day giant anaconda. Paleontologists say that the Titanoboa hunted a lot like crocodiles do. They would lurk in the water and go near the water's edge so they can attack unsuspecting thirsty animals. They would strike the their prey from the water and wrap themselves around them crushing them to death and they would put their massive jaws around them. This prehistoric snake lived in the jungles of South America 5 million years after the dinosaurs went extinct. Let's just say that I'm glad that the Titanoboa went extinct because I don't think that humans in this monster could you know coexist. Chopping its way into number 4 we have the Spinosaurus. The name is derived from its 7 foot long spines and it lived about a hundred million years ago during the Cretaceous period. This terrifying creature is the largest carnivorous dinosaur that ever roamed the earth. Yep, that means that they were even bigger than the Trinosaurus rex. They could grow over 50 feet long, 20 feet high and weigh in at 6 tons. One of its most distinctive features was this huge spine on their backs. These spines can grow up to 5 feet tall and the Spinosaurus uses as a way to intimidate other 
other predators and also to show off to a potential mate. Yeah, I think that would be highly effective. I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to get into a fight with one of these things if they're still around. Fighting its way in at number three, we have the Mosasaurus. This aquatic Godzilla looking like creature was not a dinosaur. Technically, the Mosasaurus was a meat eating reptile. It lurked in the waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. The largest Mosasaurus species grow over 50 feet long and they lived at the surface of the water in order to breathe air. They would basically feed on whatever was edible or any animal that was unfortunate enough to cross their path. This meant that they ate fish, also plesiosaurs, and even even other Mosasaurus. Let's take a look at their mouths. They had terrifying jaws. They actually have a second pair of teeth in its upper palate so that the prey that was able to slide down their throats wouldn't be able to escape and their jaws could expand to help swallow their prey whole. I mean, what? Their closest living relatives are the Komodo dragon and monitor lizards. Stomping its way, number two, we have the Gigantosaurus. It roamed Argentina during the late Cretaceous period, which was about 97 million years ago, and it is known as one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs. These scary-looking beasts were 40 to about 43 feet long, weighed nearly 14 tons, and had very sharp teeth. These guys walked upright on two large and powerful legs, and they might have been very agile because of their tail. The Gigantosaurus didn't really have any natural predators because of its size, and they had the capability of killing any live prey that crossed their paths. They had flat, serrated teeth that were also helpful when they would slice through the flesh of their prey. There is even evidence to suggest that these dinosaurs were pack hunters and they would hunt in large groups. Okay, finally making its way to number one, we've saved the beast for last. We're talking about the massive Megalodon. This prehistoric monster makes the great white shark look like a goldfish. Luckily for humans, this beast uh, went extinct 2.6 million years ago. The Megalodon was the largest predator that ever lived. Paleontologists predicted that the Megalodon can grow up to 60 feet and weigh over 60 tons. Oh, did I mention that their teeth can grow over 7 inches long? The Megalodon's diet mainly consists of whale and other large sea creatures. They had a bunch of savage hunting strategies such as ripping apart and biting off their prey's fins in order to immobilize them so that they can attack them from below. They had a bite force of 10.8 to 18.2 tons, which was way more than enough to easily crush the skull of a prehistoric whale. So you must be wondering, how did this large predator go extinct? Well, no one knows for certain, but scientists believe that their population decreased due to global cooling or by the decline in the population of the giant whales, which made up the bulk of their diet. But some people still theorize that the Megalodon still could lurk at the bottom of our oceans. I mean a big percent of it, we don't even know what's down there. So the next time you're considering going deep in the ocean, you might want to think twice about what could be lurking below. Starting us off at number 10, we have the Portuguese Man of War. While it bears a striking resemblance to a jellyfish, the Portuguese Man of War is actually a species of siphonophore, which are essentially a group of organisms that come together creating one community. There are four species specialized parts in a man of war and each is responsible for a different task floating, capturing prey, feeding, and reproduction. And they're known to travel in legions of a thousand or more. But despite their beautiful purple and blues and overall badass looking vibe, they are not a creature you want to face if you can help it. Their tentacles grow an average of about 30 feet in length, although some have been recorded as long as 100 feet. And of course, it is their tentacles that pose the big threat. Their long tendrils contain stinging nematocysts, which are tiny little capsules loaded with barbed tubes that deliver venom capable of paralyzing and killing fish. Now, luckily, it is rare that people die from its sting, but still, it will be sure to cover you in painful welts that will last days on the skin, and in some cases the venom travels to the lymph nodes, making the victim feel like they're having an allergic reaction and actively suffocating. So while it's rare to actually die, any encounter with them will leave you feeling as if death is just around the corner. Number 9. 
cone snail. Found in the warm waters in the tropics, these beautiful creatures are instantly recognizable for their highly prized brown and white marbled shells. They can be seen in shallow depths closer to shore, near coral reefs and rock formations, and beneath sandy shores. But do not dare to touch the four to six inch long gastropods, I'm warning you. Their concealed harpoon like teeth contain a complex venom known as conotoxin, making them one of the most venomous species of snails. And yes, there are other venomous snails, which I didn't even know was a thing. Thankfully, only a handful of people have ever been stung, but unfortunately, there is no anti venom. The toxin stops nerve cells from communicating with one another, so the creature not only causes paralysis within moments, but per its nickname of cigarette snail, affords you about enough time to smoke before you die. You can find these in the waters surrounding the Caribbean islands, Hawaii, and Indonesia. So if you're vacationing there, be careful. Coming in at number eight, the box jellyfish. To date, there are 51 different species of box jellyfish that have been discovered. And while there are some species you might be safe from, there are others that can quite literally take your life. The box jellyfish possesses one of the most venomous stings in the animal kingdom. And the bigger they get, the more they need to be feared. Unlike many other venomous animals, the box jelly doesn't just release its venom on anything that threatens it. It actually reacts to a chemical on the skin before releasing its death inducing poison so as not to waste it on inanimate objects. In Australia, researchers have recorded 64 deaths by the dangerous creature, but even if it doesn't take your life, the sting can cause lasting health effects on the victim's immune system as well as leave them covered in burning welts, blisters, and bleeding lesions from where it touched you. Some Australian swimmers and divers have resorted to wearing pantyhose in the water so that even if they do come into contact with the terrifying creature, the venom won't be released as their tentacles won't sense the reactive skin chemical. But even so, I will be taking further protection and not going near them to begin with. Number 7. Brazilian Wandering Spider Okay, spiders in general are creepy, but this one? The size of the spider is huge. It can be 5 to 7 inches long. Now, if that doesn't scare you already, may I add that it has a highly venomous bite. Many spiders have fangs packed full of toxins, but aren't known to bite people. Unfortunately, the Brazilian wandering spider is not one of these. It bites people, so beware. Even worse, this spider often lives up to its name and wanders into densely populated areas to seek shelter in dark, cozy places like the inside of shoes, clothes, log piles, cars, and other places people may stick their hands. Ugh. I just got the chills. <laughs> now, if you happen to get bitten by one of these, death can occur within two to six hours of a bite, typically as a result of lung failure, though fever, vomiting, and paralysis also can occur. Bites from Brazilian wandering spiders are uncommon, but don't let your guard down in their territory, just in case. Next up at number six, giant spitting cobra. Found in the eastern and northeastern parts of Africa, the giant spitting cobra is exactly what it sounds like. These big old death snakes can measure up to 9 feet, and some have been known to possess enough venom to kill 15 people. The venom is released from the fangs located in the top jaw, and if threatened, the snake wastes no time spitting its venom at the attacker, sometimes reaching as far as 8 feet away. What's even scarier is their ability to release venom for hours without running out. The giant cobras tend to aim for the victim's eyes as their venom can cause permanent blindness, but no matter where they get you, you can be in trouble. Their venom has a strong necrotizing effect, which means it can kill the tissue around the wound and cause the flesh to begin decomposition. Many survivors of spitting cobra attacks are disfigured from where the venom met their skin, and even when patients are administered with anti venom, there is still a chance amputation may be required, which is insane. As if I needed another reason to be afraid of venomous snakes. Number 5. Saltwater Crocodile Florida's alligators may be scary, but they have nothing on their cousin, the saltwater crocodile, who is more short-tempered, easily provoked, and aggressive towards anything that crosses its path. These crocodiles can grow up to 23 feet in length, weigh more than a ton, and are known to kill hundreds of people each year, with crocodiles as a whole are responsible for more human fatalities annually than sharks. 
Now, saltwater crocodiles are especially dangerous as they're excellent swimmers in both salt and fresh water and can strike quickly with a bite delivering 3,700 pounds per square inch of pressure, rivaling that of the T-Rex. If that's not enough to scare you, let me put it into perspective. Humans chomp into a well done steak around 200 per square inch, a mere 5% of the strength of this crocodile's jaw. So yeah, they're strong and can rip a human apart. These animals are mainly found in the Indo-Pacific region, everywhere from India to Vietnam and all the way to Northern Australia. I will definitely be staying away from them. Coming in at number four, Hippos. They might not be some unsuspecting creature with a venomous bite, but that doesn't mean they aren't one of the scariest things you could ever come into contact with. The hippopotamus, found in select corners of Africa, kills around 500 people a year. For reference, just 11 people reportedly died from shark related incidents in 2021. Now, the hippo is not interested in eating you. They are largely herbivores that eat about 80 pounds in grass a day, although they will sometimes feast on a carcass every now and then. Their only reason to attack you is to defend their territory, and male hippos take that more seriously than maybe anything else in the world. Most commonly, hippos will attack people on boats, launching themselves onto the vessel and capsizing it before snapping your body like a twig with their powerful jaws. But even walking too close to their designated river could be the end of you, known to even be territorial of the land surrounding their body of water, sometimes up to 550 yards away, if they spot anyone that they deem a threat, they will bolt their huge bodies at 20 miles per hour until you are, well, no longer a problem, let's just say. So while there are a lot of animals to be afraid of catching at a bad time, the hippo is definitely near the top. Number three. Pufferfish. Everyone thinks these are so cute, but they can be very dangerous, so don't touch one. Pufferfish, also known as blowfish, are located in tropical seas around the globe. They're the second most poisonous vertebrae on the planet, and they're arguably more dangerous as their neurotoxin is found in the fish's skin, muscle tissue, liver, kidneys, and gonads. Now, some people like eating pufferfish, so all of that must be avoided when preparing the creature for human consumption. While wild encounters are certainly dangerous, the the risk of death from a pufferfish increases when eating it in countries like Japan, where it's considered a delicacy known as fugu and can only be prepared by trained, licensed chefs. Even then, accidental deaths from the ingestion occur several times each year. The neurotoxin is up to 1,200 times more poisonous than that of cyanide and can cause deadening of the tongue and lips, dizziness, vomiting, arrhythmia, difficulty breathing, muscle paralysis, and if left untreated, death. So yeah, I'd suggest not eating one, better safe than sorry. Coming in at number two, the blue ringed octopus. Don't let the adorable tininess of this cute little polka dotted fella fool you. The blue ringed octopus can kill you, and it will do so faster than you can imagine. Native to the Pacific Ocean, the tiny creature is found in the soft, sandy bottom of tide pools and coral reefs. Now, usually they keep to themselves, hiding out in crevices or shells, but if you catch them outside their hiding spot, do yourself a favor and get as far away as you can. When threatened, the bright blue rings appear, and anything that gets too close will be bitten. Their venom is a thousand times more more powerful than cyanide, and these tiny little death traps pack enough to kill roughly 26 humans in a matter of minutes. First, the venom blocks nerve signals in the body, causing your muscles to go completely numb, while a wave of nausea and blindness overcomes the body. Ultimately, all of your muscles are paralyzed, including those required to breathe, and so the victim will die from a lack of oxygen. To date, there is no known antidote, although if it's caught early enough, you can sometimes be saved by artificial respiration. To make them even scarier, their deadly bite is usually painful. So most don't know they've even been attacked until it's too late. Thankfully, the blue ringed octopus won't go out of its way to harm you, so just leave them alone and you will live to see another day. And coming in at number one is golden poisonous dart frog. From the name, you know this frog is poisonous. 
It doesn't look scary, it's a bright yellow frog. But don't be fooled. Despite its small size, this frog is likely the most poisonous animal on the planet. It has enough venom in its body to kill 10 adults. Its toxins are located on its skin, so just touching it is dangerous. These frogs are actually very important to the local indigenous cultures in Colombia's rainforest. The frog is the main source of the poison and darts used by the natives to hunt their food. They carefully expose the frog to the heart of a fire, and the frog exudes small amounts of poisonous fluid. The tip of the air arrows and darts are soaked in the fluid and remain deadly for two years or longer. Scientists are unsure how the golden poisonous dart frog gets its venom, as scientific studies show that if the frog does not eat its usual diet of Colombian plants and insects, it does not have venom. While an encounter with this animal can be terrifying, scientists have also found it very useful. So to conclude, don't, don't touch this frog.